Hey guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we are going to be doing an unboxing and review on the Ansel 8410 OBD2 code reader. We're going to get this hooked up to my 2006 Toyota Corolla. We're going to go through all the different functions and see what this thing is all about. Um, so OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics and the 2 is a designation on all cars and light trucks model year 1996 and newer that were sold in the US and they were required to have this port in the vehicle. So essentially any 1996 and newer vehicles in the US you're most likely going to have this on the driver's side underneath your dash. If the vehicle was sold outside of the US, you're still more than likely going to have this in your vehicle. Just take a look to confirm for sure. Alright guys, well let's go ahead and get this opened up. Um, before we do really quick, let's take a look at the package. So obviously we got the scanner in the front here um, on the back of the package. Um, you know, it talks about all the different main functions of this unit here. Um, it talks about diagnostic coverage, um, you know, that it works on most 1996 and newer OBD2 compliant US, European, and Asian vehicles. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get this opened here. It's just got that uh, clamshell packaging, so you just pull it apart like so. Um, Okay, so we got the owner's manual here. These are really important to read through before you use the unit. This talks all about the unit, all about the, you know, the proper way to use it, the safe way to use it, and gives you everything you're going to need to know on how to use this unit. So make sure that you read through this in detail um, before you use the unit so you fully understand uh, how it functions um, and how to use it safely. Okay, so now for the unit itself. We got like a little USB cable here. Probably to, um, we'll read through the manual to verify, but probably to hook it up uh, to your computer to get software updates. It's got the little uh, USB port down there. Um, so here's the unit itself. Um, nice handheld unit. I like the orange color. Um, you know, would fit in a drawer, a toolbox, really easy. Um, you know, easy to hold in the, the palm of your hand. So yeah, let's go ahead and take this out to the car and get it hooked up and see what it's all about. All right, guys, here is my car here, and I wanted to show you where the port is on my car so you know what they look like. Um, there it is right there. Um, notice how the top is longer than the bottom, um, and the sides are angled. So you can only put the connector on one way, so make sure to make note of that. Um, if you look at the connector here, you can see same thing. Uh, you know, the top is longer than the bottom and the sides are angled so you know which way to install this when you connect it. So um, let me go ahead and get this hooked up really quick and I will be right back. All right, guys, you do have to turn your car to the on position, but don't start it. It just needs to be to the on position so the vehicle can communicate with the OBD2 scanner. Okay, so here is the main menu, and we're just going to go through each of these one at a time. Um, the OBD2 is the first one. Before we jump into that one, though, I wanted to go through the others. So, I am readiness. Um, you can access it through the menu or through the hot key button here. Um, we'll access it through the menu. And what this screen is showing us is if our vehicle is ready to be emissions tested, um, it lets us know in the top corner that there is one diagnostic trouble code in the system. It lets us know that the mill light is off. Mill is malfunction indicator lamp, just another name for check engine light. Um, and then it talks about the monitors below. So the check mark means that they are completed. The X means that they are not completed. And the circle with the slash through it means that they're not supported. The X that I have, the not completed, that's probably because I recently disconnected my battery and um, I just need to take my vehicle out and drive it for that monitor to complete and that most likely will resolve itself. Um, but we still do have a diagnostic trouble code that we have to figure out. So let's exit out of here. 
The next one is setup. And in setup here, you have language that you can choose from, a whole bunch of different languages there. You have unit of measure, metric in English. You have beep. Um, so like if you want this to beep as you go through it, which I'll leave that off. Um, you can record. You have background you can change and feedback you can provide to the company like if you're getting an error message uh, with this. And you do that just by the um, USB cable that's provided by hooking this into your computer. Um, okay, so let's exit out of here. Um, the next one we have to look at is called Lookup. Um, this one's cool. You can type in, you know, a trouble code and it'll tell you what it is. Uh, to go to the next uh, character, you just hit the enter and the down button at the same time. So let's type in like P0100. We hit enter there. You can see that this comes back as mass or volume airflow sensor A circuit. Um, unless you're a mechanic and you do this for a living, you're not going to know what that means. So the best thing to do when you get a trouble code is to go to the internet, research the trouble code, see the different things that might be causing it, and then decide if you want to try to fix that yourself or if you wanted to bring it to a mechanic. Let's exit out here. Uh, the next is review. So in this one, you can review the diagnostic trouble click codes or delete the diagnostic trouble code data. Let's exit out of there. And then tool information. This will tell you the uh, serial number of the unit and the hardware and software versions so you can see if you have the most up-to-date info. Okay, um, the OBD2 menu. Let's go ahead and go into that. Um, it's connecting with the computer right now and, and getting some information for us. Let's give it a second to do that. Okay, so on this screen here, this is giving us some basic information. Let's us know that the mill status is off, the diagnostic trouble codes in the ECU, it's telling us we have one. It talks about the monitors that are supported, completed, and not supported. Um, it talks about the uh, data stream supported, and we'll see that in just a second. Um, and then the ignition and the proto uh, protocol type. And if we hit enter here, we'll come into the main uh, diagnostic menu. So the first thing we're going to do is read the code that's in my computer. Comes back as P0118. Um, this particular code could mean I'm low on coolant or I'm leaking coolant or... Um, you know, a whole bunch of different things. I might have a problem with my thermostat. Uh, a lot of different things can trigger this code. This is where you would go to the internet, though, once you get this code, do your research, see if it's something you want to try to fix or if you want to take it to a mechanic. Let's exit out here. You can erase codes. Uh, you would do this after you made the fix on your vehicle and you think you've resolved the issue. Um, I am readiness, which we ac accessed from the main menu. Uh, data stream is cool because you can come in here and if you come down to view graphic items, you got a whole bunch of different things that you can look at. Um, but like in my case, you know, engine coolant temperature. I could hit enter here, it puts the check mark next to it, and then I hit exit. And what this do, is doing is it will provide a graph to me of the coolant temperature. So, um, you know, I can look at it in real time. Let's back out here. You have freeze frame, which is very important. Um, freeze frame gives you all the information from when the diagnostic trouble code was recorded. And this is useful information because um, it might help you... Uh, track down within that particular trouble code what could be causing it. So, um, you know, a good place to look for all these metrics uh, and what they mean is just going to the internet and doing the research on your particular code. Um, an oxygen O2 sensor test if your vehicle supports it. Onboard monitor test. Uh, this function can be utilized to read the results of uh, onboard diagnostic monitoring, test for specific component systems, uh, tester component. 
uh, EVAP system test. So if your vehicle does support it, um, you can test for leaks in your EVAP system. And then finally, vehicle information, which will give you, um, you know, VIN numbers and th that type of info about your specific vehicle. All right, guys. Well, that was it. Um, you know, this unit has a lot of cool features on it. Um, Price-wise, it's about average as far as these things go. Um, you know, it does have some nice features that some of the less expensive ones do not. Um, these are great to have, you know, to put in a toolbox or a drawer and it's there when you need it, when your check engine light comes on, uh, to get the trouble code and do the research and figure out if it's something that you want to try to fix yourself or maybe you don't, maybe you want to bring it to a mechanic, but at least it will give you an idea of what's going on with your vehicle so you can do some price shopping and figure out what's best for you. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.